Okay, so here we have the tutorial voice wave example, which is showing the differences on how frequency ratio, output level, and the envelope control the sound of the waveform that you hear. So I'm going to play the example again. So what I've done here is to set this up so we hear three distinct waveforms. We begin with a sawtooth type wave, then that disappears and we fade in a square type wave, then that disappears and we fade in a inharmonic bell type wave. So let's break down how we put this together to highlight the concepts we've talked about in the programming article. So I'm using algorithm 5 here and that's so I can have independent control of operators 2 three and four and how they all feed into or modulate operator one. So again the terminology operator one is the carrier wave. That's the one that we actually hear. Then we have operators two, three, and four and these are the modulator waves. We do not hear them directly but we hear the effect of them by the harmonic and overtones that they create in the resulting sound. So with algorithm 5, where we have each of them independently going into operator 1, we're able to control them independent of one another and how they contribute to the sound. So let's turn off operators 3 and 4. So we hear just the component from operators 1 and 2. So this is the initial sawtooth type sound that starts bright and then decays into a sine wave. So first, why does it sound like a sawtooth wave? That's because we've set the frequency ratios to 1 and 1 for these two operators. So we call that relationship a 1 to 1 ratio. That creates all the overtones in the harmonic series which sounds like a sawtooth wave. How bright it is depends on the level and the feedback. So the envelope generator is of course what controls the output of each operator. So I'm going to turn off operator 2. You're going to see the envelope generator for operator 1 is 127 for all the level values. So for as long as I hold the key you're going to hear operator 1. It doesn't fade out, it doesn't decay, it goes for the whole time. Turn operator 2 on again here. You're going to see that operator 2 starts at a level of 127, then goes to 0. We've set the rate number 1 to 127, so it comes on right away. And rate 2 is 55, so it's going to decay to 0 in a medium rate. And so therefore, we hear this resultant sound. So when we first press the key, you hear it very bright, and then those harmonics disappear as the envelope closes down to zero. So let's turn off operator two, turn on operator three, and look at the second part of our wave, which is the operator three modulating operator one. This is the square wave part of the sound that fades in and out in the middle. The reason why this sounds like a square wave is because we have a frequency relationship of 2 for the modulator, operator 3, and 1 for operator 1. We call this a 2 to 1 ratio, and that creates the every odd harmonic series as characteristic of a square wave. And again, the amount of overtones or harmonics we hear is controlled by what our level and feedback are, and how our envelope changes those over time. So you'll see we have a level of 36 that goes to a level of 127 and back down to 0. So with the rates that we've set here, this creates a square wave with a slight delay. It fades in and fades out. So here's our example. So what 
what you hear is the sine wave from operator 1 by itself. As operator 3 comes in, you hear the harmonics getting brighter, and then it fades back out. Okay, so let's turn off operator 3, turn on operator 4, and now we'll just hear the resulting waveform that we get from operator 4 modulating operator 1. This is the final part of the wave that sounds like that bell tone with the metallic or inharmonic components. So why do we get that? So if you look down here, you'll see our frequency ratio for operator 4 is set to 4.66. Because this is not a whole number, instead of creating harmonics that fall evenly on the overtone series, we are creating overtones that fall into the cracks. This is what we hear as a bell type or metallic or non-harmonic type of waveform. Again, its brightness is controlled by the level and feedback and how that fades in and out or how the intensity changes over time is based on our envelope shape. You'll see we start at a level of 2, go down to a level of 0, up to a level of 79. I've set that up so we have sort of a long delay before we fade in and then for as long as we hold the key it'll stay at this level of 79. So let's hear that. Now it's going to take a little bit because remember this is the third part of the wave so we're going to hear a sine wave where the other two envelopes are running for operators two and three and then this comes in later so bear with me. So you hear the long delay before it slowly fades in and then for as long as we hold the key that's going to be our sustaining uh, sound turn them all back on. So we hear our original example. So this is the Reface DX tutorial voice wave example. Hope you found this educational.